What's good, YouTube? Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to mix your beats. So let's get started. This is the beat. All right. Um, this is just a limiter. I don't have no effects on it. Let me see on the master. Just a limiter on the master. So um, let's start with the uh, the melody, which is a sign pluck. All right. So what we're what our goal is for mastering is to get everything in their own space. It's kind of like um, your food touching. We don't want like uh your greens to go into your cornbread basically like the kick drum can't be in the space of the 808 because the 808 needs to occupy this the synth can't be in the space of the lead so we're basically just cutting stuff and panning things to get everything in their own place so they're not clashing with each other that's the uh, purpose of mixing so um what we're gonna do first thing that we're gonna do is definitely eq we don't need to put this thing in its place because it already has reverb. So reverb is one of the tools to like, you know, put things in three dimensional space by uh, giving the illusion of depth. So, um, but this reverb has way too much low end, which could mess with the 808. So we don't want that. Look at all that. But the thing about sine waves is they um, they tend to occupy one specific frequency. So if we cut this out, we might cut out the whole sine wave. So we got to like, you know, slightly cut it. Like I just lost the base of the sine wave. We don't want that. All right. So we come into a mix that like we need the, the bass in this instrument, but we don't want the bass in this instrument to mess with the 808. So we're basically just gonna side chain it, just how you would side chain the kick to the 808. So every time the 808 hits, um, this gets turned down. All right, uh, just type in side chain, mix graph, it should come with it. So this one is gonna be see sending the signal, and this one is gonna be receiving. Oops, side, boop. So we probably don't need this. Receive. And where do we want to receive it? Where is the... I thought you can... Oh, oh, no, it goes for the 808. Alright, you can choose the frequency. So, probably like... 500. Yeah. Let's just leave it right there. So it's just gonna be focusing on the 500 and down frequency, which is basically, let me check. I think that's where the base of the sine wave instrument was. Probably 300 and down. 300, all right, boom. So we come here. Every time the 808 hits, this instrument is getting um, pushed down in volume. So we don't want it to be completely demolished. We just want it to slightly dip down. So right now it's being demolished. We got to fix that with this duck button. This is demolished. to kind of recover fast hold on we, it's getting it's still getting demolished i think to add to this let's just eq the low lows it's probably getting crushed because this 808 isn't um 
is peaking, is clipping. There it go. 808 had too much power in it, so it was demolishing it. All right, so now that it's not clipping, now they can both co coexist. All right. about as far as we can get with the EQ before taking out all the lows. All right, say that. Now we got another beast to tackle is the uh, kick in 808. The kick is in the space of the 808 uh, at most times. Now we're going to use a different uh, plugin for this one. This one's Density Mark II. It's a free plugin. So we're going to put this on the 808 and side chain it to the kick. This doesn't say kick because I didn't name it. Hold on. Let me name it kick. Boom. Side chain it to the kick. Pulse fader. So every time the 808 hits. Wait, no. Every time the kick hits, the 808 gets turned down. at the range it starts compressing when this uh, green meter comes down this is basically bringing up the drive of the kick because basically we just gotta we gotta uh, drive it up until it hits the uh, threshold and that's when the, the uh, gain it starts compressing and get gain reduction the timing is basically uh it's like a attack attack knob so um usually people put it on three but i like to put it on four just to make sure um the kick and eight away are definitely not clashing so it's basically uh once the kick hits how long does it take the eight away to come back up to its regular volume so this is what does it say i think 0.8 milliseconds eight 0.0 milliseconds, I think. You can add some makeup too if you think it's uh the airways getting turned down too much. But this kick is clipping, so we're gonna have to put a limiter on it. Now you could say, oh, you could just turn this down, but I like the aggressive sound of like like the kick when when it's near clipping if i turn it down it's not going to have that aggressive punch that i like so let me show you like, i can't really feel that all right so um If we had if we had double kicks, then I would compress this. But since this is a singular kick, I think I'm just gonna let it slide. Now we got hi hats. Hold on, let me just solo this. Let me not bring in the enchant yet. We gotta pan these hi hats because uh, we can't have everything in the middle. This one goes left. This one goes right. Oh, I forgot. Uh, you're gonna start off with it on zero, but I usually put my hi hats like all the way down, cause um, it's it'll be too much high end. Like the the snare and the hi hats is like they they'll be in there, you know, they'll be clashing. So I usually turn the hi hats down. <laughs> So if you want the hi hats to have a sizzle to them, I think this is an uh, effect that comes with Mixcraft, so everybody should have it. Uh, you put on this FSQ 1964, and I put it on soft enhance. Before and after. Before. After. But it does bring up in volume, so you got to compensate that by taking some out. Let's EQ this 
808 because I'm sure it has a whole bunch of high end frequencies in it. <laughs> So, bringing that chant. It's already lowered in volume, so uh, you could EQ it if it has. Basically, I always check the, uh, well, I use this EQ because it has a spectrum analyzer, but if you don't have that, this EQ, then you can use this and check the, um, you got to check what space is it in, in the analyzer. So it goes from 200 to like 4K. The 80, so it's not affecting the 808, so it's basically gonna be in the range of probably the melody. Um, but it's low in volume, so it shouldn't, it shouldn't affect it at all, so we'll let it be. You could EQ it for, you know, um, for, you know, coloring reasons. Like if I put this lo-fi EQ on here, this is what it looks like. Before and after. Hold on. Before. After. Yeah, I got tons of these. Before. After. That one sounded good. You just have to bring it out the middle. Probably this one again. Now the master's clipping, just throw a limiter on there. You don't ever want to touch the, uh, don't ever touch the master knob. Like, you're never supposed to touch that. Leave it at zero. If something is clipping, you, it's usually, you usually got to turn something down over here or, like, level it correctly. Um, I'm not a big fan of putting compressors on your master because it, it, Eliminates the dynamics of your uh, beat, making it sound flat. But uh, I would put an exciter here, which basically um, this distorts or saturates certain frequency bands of the beat. Uh, I don't know if there's anything, any effect like that that comes stock with this craft. Uh, probably this one is the only thing that comes close, but. Psh. Good luck trying to get this to like actually work without destroying your track. Yeah, this will demolish everything. I am gonna do it. Let me see. See this one it like it has it has different bands for the bass and the mids and the treble. Uh, you can eat, you can uh, distort them differently, but it's not like you can't really do it how you're supposed to. Like how, if you have like isotope or um, this is the only exciter I got, so you can uh, control the low, low mids, uh, mid highs and highs. So I would distort the lows. Where the uh that's where that sine wave is you can hear it getting distorted you hear it just give it a little little sizzle uh another thing you could do is eq with a snare Is that where the snare is? Where's the snare? Oh, I think I might have it still on solo. 
Nope. Save this. What just happened to the drums? Hold up, what just happened to the drums? You guys see this? Nothing's on solo. Miss Crappy tripping on me, man. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, I'm dumb. I had this on solo. All right. What? This wasn't the... All right, this wasn't the um, kick. This was the snare. So where the hell is the kick? I didn't even give it an output. All right. Jeez. Now I got to output these. All right, now this is the kick. This is the snare. This is the clap. Boom. All right. So now we, that you outputted them, they go to their individual uh, channels. So now I can EQ them differently. This kick is crazy. All right, let's check out this. Hopefully it doesn't have any low frequencies. Look at that, oh God. All right, there. Do someone that clap pan it or something, it's just stuck in the middle. Lower it. Oh, this resonance knob is like a low cut. I use it uh, like a low cut, sometimes it works like that. So, pull it up if you want to take some of the lows out your uh, percussions. That's how you uh that's how you mix a beat. Make sure to follow me at I'm Dices. I'm doing a mixing and mastering service. Uh mixing for 30. Well no no mixing and mastering for 30. So hit me up. I'm I don't think I ever mixed a beat. Like somebody sent me a beat to mix, but uh yeah. Um I'm doing more tutorials. Leave a comment in the comment section, whatever tutorials I should do next. So once again I'm Dices and I'm out.